everyone. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to another fabulous day in the art room. Uh, this video is for my third grade friends. Hello, my third grade friends. Welcome back to the art room. All right, uh, this uh, video is going to cover the architecture lesson that I was uh, teaching my third graders recently, All right? Uh, so if you missed it, here it is. Hello, welcome. All right, uh, today we're going to be talking about architects. Architects are artists who design buildings. So say, okay, so the buildings that you've been in, right, were designed by an artist they were designed by an architect right the architect has to think of the layout all right so that means what rooms all right are going to be in the building uh what the inside's going to look like what the outside's going to look like all right they might even kind of look at what's going to happen in the the grounds around it so like the yard all right uh the client is the customer okay so the client is the person that you are building the building for okay so you're designing the building all right for the client Okay, so here's what we're gonna do today for our architecture lesson. Okay, I'm first gonna show you my example project, all right, and then uh, hopefully uh, you guys will get cracking uh, on your project. I'm gonna show you uh, a couple of, um, uh, normally I do them as slideshows, but I'll show you some pictures here in a minute um, and talk a little bit about architecture around the world. Um, we're gonna do a very brief one of that, only like five pictures, just because, you know, we don't have a lot of time. I don't want this video to be hours long. You might not stay that long. All right, so uh, I'm just gonna keep it to five. Um, part of our uh, standards of learning for the state uh, is that uh, third graders look a little bit at architecture, um, different types of architecture from around the world, right? So we're going to take a look at some of those, and then we're also going to spotlight on a particular architect, um, so you're getting a view of a lot of different architects and architecture, and then a little view here. All right, uh, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, first things first, you're going to need some pen uh, pencil and some paper, okay? So get a piece, get a few pieces of paper, get a pencil, all right? Get something to color in with. If you have anything, remember the motto of the art room this year, use what you got, okay? So if you've got markers, use that. If you've got crayons, use that. If you've got colored pencils, use that. If you've got paint, use that. If you've got gel pens, use that. Just use what you got, okay? Cool. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and start by showing you my example of this project. All right. So first on your paper, what I'd like you to do is at the top in the corner, I want you to write who your client is. You get to choose who your client is. Okay. Uh, so I chose for my example, I chose my husband and I. So this is a, a this is a house built for the O'Neills, all right? Uh, and you you might do something different though. You might build it for your family. You might build it for you. You might build this house for, you might say, oh, I'm gonna design this house for um, uh, maybe Batman. I've had a student do that before. They made like a really cool skyscraper. They went this way and they made like a cool skyscraper for Batman. Um, I've had a student make uh, a new house for uh, a new castle really for Santa Claus in the North Pole, all right? Uh, there's all different kinds of people that you could do this for. Uh, so make your choice. Who would you like to design a building for? Okay, awesome. Uh, my only requirement is if you choose your client, you have to know something about them, right? Because in order to do this next step, you got to know something about them, right? So I chose the O'Neills, all right? And I know some things about us, obviously. So I made this list of things that we would like in a house, right? Okay, so I want you to think, okay, if I'm building this for Batman, all right, what does Batman need in a super cool house? You got to start listing it out, all right? This helps organize your thoughts, organize your brain, all right? So when you're drawing, you can just look over at your list and say, oh yeah, I need to include that, all right? So a garage for my car, a library, a guitar room, a kitchen, a bedroom, a bathroom, a living room, a closet, and a garden, all right? Uh, so I really love books, so I wanted a little library so you can see I made, ooh, look at this, a little library in here. My husband collects guitars, so I've got this guitar room here. Check that out, all right? Uh, and uh, I went a little funky with it, as you can see, it's kind of a funky design here, and I'll show you uh, a little bit of that uh, in our architecture around the world, all right? Um, but I have this garden out here, so think big, all right? You don't, you're not limited in this design, all right? Uh, you could say maybe you've always wanted a roller coaster in your backyard. You could totally make a roller coaster in your backyard. I once had a student put a go kart racing track in their front yard. Uh, you really are not limited uh, to what you can do here. So decide, okay, what well, what do I need, all right? You could do this for you as a grown-up. You could say, okay, I really want sports cars, and you draw your sports cars, right? Uh, so it's really uh, up to you, all right, what you want to include in your uh, uh, design here, okay? Now, 
Uh, I will say that I do want you to try, I'm going to show you five different buildings um, that are from around the world. Um, and like I said, these this is not an entire list. I wish we had the time to just go through and I can show you all these different buildings from around the world, but we just for the sake of time, we don't have enough time to be doing that. So I'm going to show you five. All right. Uh, I'm going to show you how to uh, kind of adapt uh, uh, from all five. Oh, hang tight. My battery's low. Whew. And we're back. Crisis averted. All right. So, sorry about that. I had to plug my computer in. All right. So uh, I'm going to show you five things that you could adapt into your design. I just want you to pick out three. Okay. So watch me do all five of them. Okay. And then you pick out which three you really like. And I want you to try them out in your design. All right. I always get this question. Students say, hey, can I do all five if I want to? Of course you can. If you want to work in all five of them into your design, you do that, all right? Uh, but first, let's go ahead and get started uh, looking at those uh, uh, ar architecture pieces, all right? Okay, so the first one, all right? In Moscow, Russia, there's a beautiful, beautiful cathedral, all right? Uh, and I believe it used to be a church and is now used as a museum, all right, uh, so people can go and look at artifacts and things in there, all right, but what I really love about this, take a look at the tops, all right, of this cathedral, look at that. I've had students say it looks kind of like the shape of a Hershey Kiss up here, all right, and they're very funky designs and colors, they're beautiful, all right. Um, and this is actually an architectural element, right, that uh, gets used. It's called an onion dome, all right? So there are different kinds of domes in architecture, right? And this one is called an onion dome, all right? Pretty cool. So let's say you wanted to add that into your design. The first thing you're going to do after you've made your list that has, you've got your, you've picked out your client, you've made your list, right, of what they need, all right, that's very important, in their house, then you're going to draw a long skinny rectangle. Think of it as if you've ever played with Lego blocks, right? Think of it as this is your main Lego and then you're building onto it, okay? So I've got this long skinny rectangle to start with for my house, right? Hmm. If I wanted to add an onion dome, this is what I would do. I would start by drawing another long skinny rectangle on either side. I'm going to make it balanced, all right? And then I'm going to go ahead and add that onion dome on top. I'm going to go up and then down in the same kind of shape, that Hershey Kiss shape, right? Up and then down. Pretty cool, all right? Awesome. And that's kind of, and I've had students say, it's kind of, it is like an onion, all right? It's that onion shape, right? Okay. Next, I'm going to add the different uh, uh, designs. As you can see, they've got fun patterns and designs on them. So what you could do is you could say, okay, like it might do zigzags across, or I might do swirls, right? Right, beautiful. And that kind of pays that respect to uh, what a gorgeous, like I said, it's one of the most beautiful buildings in the entire world, uh, St. Basil's Cathedral in Moscow, Russia. Gorgeous. All right, uh, I've also had students look at this and say, oh, could I have like a statue out front of mine? Yeah, you could totally add a statue. That's totally fine. That's up to you. All right. The next one up is the Taj Mahal in Agra, India, all right? Gorgeous, gorgeous building, all right? Uh, and what I always like to show, I like to show, it does have a dome, um, a Taj Mahal dome, all right? And students usually point out, they said it looks kind of like, it, it almost looks like the um, onion domes from the last one, but it actually doesn't have, if you notice, it doesn't have, it doesn't go all the way back in like that one does. It kind of stays out a bit, all right? So it's a bit different, all right? But this is the Taj Mahal dome, all right? And what I want to show you instead of this, I want to show you, um, instead of the dome per se, I want to show you the arches actually. The arches right here are absolutely gorgeous, all right? For the, for the big opening for the door here and then the windows, all right? Gorgeous large arches, all right, that just make it very grand looking. They have designs around them. Absolutely beautiful, absolutely beautiful, all right? I always have students say, what is this building? What is it used as? Well, it was actually built, all right, um, back in, it was commissioned in 1632 by uh, uh, the Emperor Shah Jahan to house the tomb of his wife, Mumtaz Mahal, all right? Uh, so it's actually a tomb. So it's like where somebody's buried, a mausoleum, all right? Absolutely beautiful. 
All right. Uh, and what if you want to add anything from from this kind of inspiration? Really, it's inspiration from this. All right. You could add an archway. All right. And to do that, I'm going to kind of use that shape for the door, really, for over the door. All right. For over my front door. And I'm going to do a pointed arch. All right. Which means I'm going up and then back down. All right. And kind of that same kind of pointed look to it. And I'm going to do down and then do the doorknobs, right? And to make it uh, really look like an archway per se, over the door, I'm going to go around with another line and then go across to kind of give it a bit of texture, really give it more of an arch look, All right? If I wanted to do that for windows, I just go across, across, up, up, and then arched. Absolutely beautiful. Like I said, absolutely beautiful building. Very inspiring. All right. The next one that we're going to look at is the Parthenon in Athens, Greece. All right. We're going to take a look at the Parthenon. Uh, what's very impress impressive about the Parthenon, okay, it's been standing for a very, very long time. All right. It's ancient. All right. It was an ancient temple uh, dedicated to Athena, the Greek god of wisdom. All right. And um, it survived a very long time, and I really love the columns in this one. Uh, that's my favorite architecture element here is the columns, right? In a lot of Greek and Roman uh, architecture, you'll see a lot of ionic columns, right? So that means that the tops have kind of a bit of a fancy look to them. Uh, to keep things a bit simple, though, in here, we're going to be inspired. We're going to add some columns. We won't go uh, into all the detail because it'll take a lot, all right? But uh, if you would like to, this is how you could add columns. All right, to your drawing here, to your building, All right? I could do long skinny rectangle up here, long skinny rectangle over here, long skinny rectangle down here, long skinny rectangle down here, connect them with two lines, all right? It almost looks like, uh, I have students say it looks like the capital bubble letter I, if you were doing capital I, the bubble letters, all right? Add a couple lines for texture. Excellent. All right. Now to make it look like, like in my example here, to make it look like, all right, it's going around, right? What I did is I went like this. It looks like it's holding up, actually holding up the uh, wall there. I went two lines from one to the other and then did lines across. That kind of makes it look like you'd have to go back. The doors are, the archway with the doors are behind. You'd have to go back into space and this is forward a bit. All right, uh, so you can add that, all right, uh, to that if you want to add those. Uh, and like I said, if you want to get a bit fancy, you can get a bit fancy up there. A little bit of a spiral on either side, you could do that. All right, but Right? You can add columns uh, if you'd like to add columns to that. Like I said, gorgeous architecture, beautiful buildings. All right, the next one you might recognize, all right, this is the Empire State Building, right, in New York City, New York, all right. Beautiful building, very tall skyscra skyscraper, all right, uh, very recognizable. And what I really love is this is actually, so I actually included a picture uh, that somebody took from uh, uh, the top. They were all the way at the top. And you can even see, I really like how uh, they even uh, light it up at night, which is pretty cool that they can do that. Uh, so this is actually one where they were like projecting a rainbow up there, right? Absolutely love this. Uh, if you want to create kind of a skyscraper top, right? If you wanted to do that, okay? Um, yeah, a bit of quickly a bit of uh, uh, about that it is a famous skyscraper it was built in 1931 tourists from around the world come to visit this building each year uh, my favorite part, of, part about it uh, is up on the observation deck like I showed you that part where you can look out and see the city uh, and this is how you could add a tower top you could do long skinny rectangle getting smaller as you go up with a triangle on top and a circle on that you can add windows, of course, to give it a little bit more of that skyscraper look if you wanted to add that to your buildings. Excellent. All right, 
Last one up, gorgeous building. Love this one. Like I said, all five of these, just gorgeous buildings. All right, this is the Sydney Opera House in Sydney, Australia. All right, uh, it is an opera house and it houses a lot of arts uh, uh, things. So it has art exhibits. So sometimes people will bring their paintings or works of art to show. Uh, people will perform there. So like music uh, ensembles, uh, uh, music, so music sh shows and things like that, um, performances. So a lot of like performing arts. Uh, it's a beautiful place for that. Um, um, I especially love the ceiling or the, the roof on this, I should say. The roof on this is absolutely beautiful. All right. And you can actually see, uh, just like we saw with the Empire State Building, uh, they can project onto buildings with lights, right? And they actually pr can project images here. So you can actually see on this, um, this was an art exhibit, I suppose, that was up there that they uh, wanted to show the art, uh, the artist's work on projected onto uh, the roof of the Sydney Opera House. It's just gorgeous, right? Uh, and this is a little shot from inside there, right? So if you would like to include something really cool, I wanted to show you this because I love how this architect made the the roof's so different, all right, then uh, it's, it really stands out, right? And I want, whenever I talk about this, I want to talk to students about how um, you can really make uh, buildings stand out by adding something unique. I find that really beautiful. Some of the most beautiful buildings in the world are ones that have something that stands out, that's very unique, all right? So uh, during your building, maybe you're saying, oh, maybe you're designing your building. You're like, oh, maybe I want to add, maybe you have a building that you add that kind of triangle design to the top or you add something of your own design, all right? Uh, put it into your own design. Think of a, a strange way maybe that you can make uh, the top of your building or something on your building stand out, all right? Uh, so those are the five things that uh, uh, I wanted to show you. Pick three of those to try. Uh, uh, I would love to see that. And, uh, you know, if you want to go for all five, you can go for all five. I love it, all right? Love the enthusiasm. Now, another thing that I always like to show students is when you're making this, all right, remember to show everything that you made in your list, show it in here. You can either do what I call the x-ray vision uh, or the big window method where you make a large uh, uh, square or rectangle and just show us into the house, like maybe it's a big window or we can see through the wall, all right, and show us that way. Or you can make these little, uh, little dolly doors, I call them little dolly doors, all right, where you can kind of open it and see into the room. It's easy to make these, all right? All you got to do is take another piece of paper, one that you're not using, take another blank sheet of paper, fold it in half. All right, easy peasy, fold it in half. Okay, take scissors and a glue stick. With your scissors, when you've got this paper folded, all right, like a book, on the folded side, so this side is open, this side is folded, on the folded side, I'm going to cut out a box. All right, now it's like a little book. Look at that, all right? I can take that glue stick, all right? Put a little bit of glue on the back of this, right? And then stick it down onto the paper wherever I want that room to be, okay? And then it becomes, check it, a room. And then I draw the room inside here, all right? And color it, and to add effect, I even um, added, I even colored on the outside, uh, the color of the outside of the house to make it look really like you could open up like that. All right, so that's what you could do for that. Um, and please don't forget uh, that you can add um, texture to your building as well. Uh, so maybe you want it to look like your building is made out of brick, right? That's fairly easy to do. You can go across, right? Go across your building and then go down. Space out your lines a bit. Don't make them directly under each other. And that'll kind of make it look like brick. You could also make it look a little bit like um, a really cool stone, like a cottage kind of look, right? By just doing little stones, right? They don't have to be a certain size or a certain shape. They could just be little stones that fit into each other. And it kind of makes it look like stonework there, okay? So you can add a little bit of texture. This project, I always tell students, it really does, like most of our artwork, like any artwork really, the more detail you're going to add, the cooler it's going to look. So the more time you spend adding detail uh, and really uh, getting in there with the details, uh, uh, coloring in nicely, all right, the more you do that, the more time and attention you pay on it, the better it's going to look, I promise. So take your time on it. Uh, don't forget about the yard. The yard is very important, right? Uh, and make sure that if you do 
want this to count towards your art grade that you take a picture of it and you can send it to my email address or send it to me uh, if your adult uses remind they can send it to me that way right and before we leave I do want to talk to you about a, a specific artist right uh, I really want to talk to you about Norma Merrick Sklarek all right she's a famous architect okay and here's a picture of her Oh, amazing. She's just an amazing person, which is why I like to uh, tell students about her. Norma Merrick Sklarek was the first African-American woman to pass her license exam to officially become an architect in both New York in 1954 and California in 1962, all right? And that is a difficult test, and she aced it on her first go. That's amazing. I mean, she's just incredible, right? Uh, so fabulous architect, Norma Merrick Sklarek. And I wanted to show you, um, so she was born in Harlem in 1926 and she graduated from Columbia University's architecture school. Um, then she passed the New York architecture exam, all right, on her first try, like I said, amazing and so impressive um, and she was offered a job in California at a big architecture firm um, and then uh, passed her license to be in California as well right in 1980 she became the first african-american woman to be elected to the American Institute of Architects which is very very prestigious it's a very uh, fancy fancy thing there then Norma established her own firm called Siegel Sklarek and Diamond and that was the largest woman-owned architecture firm in the firm in the country at the time all right so big business right uh she designed many amazing and creative buildings and she really did change the game i mean she had to break a lot of barriers and be the first at a lot of things but she did it and she became an amazing role model uh uh for for so many people um and and she went into architecture um uh, and so many, so many young women have gone into architecture after seeing uh, Norma's bravery and determination uh, to follow her dreams, right? And in an interview, Norma said, in architecture, I had absolutely no role model. I'm happy to be a role model for others that follow. She also said that um, back then, some people were kind of skeptical that a woman was going to be in charge uh, since there were so few at the time doing this job, which now there are so many uh, doing this job, which is amazing. She really helped open that door. Um, and at first, the architects working on the airport, she did this um, design for an airport, were skeptical because a female was in charge of the project. But uh, she said that, um, this is a quote from her, but a number of projects were going on there at the time and mine was the only one that was on schedule. All right. So that's kind of cool. She was like, not only am I really good at this, I'm also keeping it on schedule and I got this. All right. So here's part of her design there. All right. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Right. That's an airport. All right. Here's some more of her works of art. Just amazing. Just amazing. Her, her buildings that she's designed, just gorgeous gorgeous buildings. Awesome. So I just want to share a little bit uh, about her with you uh, because I think that's important to kind of uh, not only learn about a style of art, learn a little bit about art from around the world, and also learn about particular artists, all right, that are inspiring, all right? So I hope this stuff inspired you a bit. Um, I can't wait to see your designs. Uh, please send them to my email address or to me on Remind. I've made this video long enough, all right? But uh, I can't wait to see you again. Have a good one. Bye!